Comparing Cities, A Day in the Life of a Dance Teacher, Inside Scoop on a Journalist, and Following a Head Chef in a Restaurant. All this plus a live performance from Matthew Perrier with his new songs, Moving On, and also his latest hit, Consequence of Age, coming to you live, this and much more to come. I'm Marcelo Galvão. And I'm Andrew Safe, and this is The, the Journal. Journal. Welcome to the journal, or the final episode of the journal, a studio show produced by the first semester film and broadcast student here at the Story Arts Center. Today, we'll be looking at informative documentaries with each one having its own unique story. We'll take a look at a dancer who teaches jazz and hip hop dancing. Then we'll follow a journalist who describes how things have changed in the journalism world since the economic downturn in 2008. Uh, what are you doing, Andrew? I really don't like packing, but hey, it's all part of moving. Marcelo, can you give me a hand? Yeah, sure. Anyways, while we're doing this, let's look at our next talk. It's called Night and Day, and it's all about moving from one city to another. Let's take a look. I lived in the south end of Oshawa. That was my neighborhood. When people think about the south end, the first thing that comes to mind is probably General Motors. I worked in the motors through another company and where I lived, it really was just a few minutes walk away to gate two. Once you pass the gate and go inside, it's like a neighborhood of its own. My neighborhood here is going to be pretty different when GM closes down. People move and companies do as well. And if there wasn't much to look at in my neighborhood prior to the moving, it's definitely gonna look pretty scarce when they do. I moved into this neighborhood just before the economy fell. I mean, there are still things to do here, but very limited. There's not a lot of activity. It's pretty boring. It's pretty plain. There's not a lot of excitement. You have to be pretty creative to make time pass by here. But there are still things to do. It's just very limited. A lot of businesses have closed up. Um, a lot of plazas. Since the economy has fell, um, you definitely see the results of it with a lot of businesses closing down or moving out. A lot of businesses just never recover. And I thought, well, why not try East York? And where I moved is right next to school, which is great. It seems like a more friendly area here too. The houses are a lot more expensive here, that's for sure. And in comparison, there's a lot of businesses up and running here. That's always a good thing. And there's just so much to do. I mean, you have the park where you can skate. So it's really family oriented here. It's a busy community. There's a lot of activity going on here, which is really nice. Uh, there's a lot of places to go. Um, the park is really interesting here. It's, it's wide open space. That's always good. There's so much to do here. It's really awesome. And it's uh, just more lively. You have Greek Town, which is on the Danforth. That's always a hot spot. There's a lot more to see. There's a lot more to do. It's just a more open environment. And if you ask me, I mean, it's night and day. This is the spot for me. Well, it seems like moving out worked out well for him. Good choice, Mike. Now, for our next documentary, I was fortunate enough to go to Wonderland Dance Company to follow dance instructor and performer Lindsay Aquin at... What are you doing? I don't know. I just feel like showing off my moves. Well, let's see what move she has. 
This is Live to Dance. at like a dance competition studio and I went there for a really long time and then uh, they started to ask me to like ass assist like some of the classes so then I became like a teacher's assistant and then I'd start teaching my own classes and then from there is where I met Marie um, and when she opened up her own studio she asked me to come and teach at her studio so that's how I got the job here. I love being a teacher here at Wonderland <laughs> it's like everyone is so friendly here and we all get along and it and we work hard like while we're here and we do well so it, it's a great environment I think. So a typical day for me at work um, this year in the morning I start with um, one of my soloists she's eight years old so I teach her jazz solo and then after that I do a hip-hop trio so I'm working with them and they're gonna be competing in that as well and then I have there's a new group that just joined like the studio this year so I'm teaching their jazz um, competitive jazz group and then there's also a pre-competitive class that I'm teaching so they do half of the competitions and I'm teaching their jazz group as well only like go through like a warm-up definitely starting with etching and going through all that technique stuff and then sometimes we'll do like across the floor so that they can train in like progressions and stuff like that and then we definitely like because the year is like it's comp season time so we're definitely like working on choreography and as well Six, seven. in an amazing dancer, a great teacher. I would describe her in helping. Like whenever we make one mistake, she doesn't think of it as a huge mistake. She thinks of it as a littlest mistake and she fix it for us. I think one of the best like rewarding things about being a teacher is seeing the students grow. Um, as a dancer, you only have a short amount of time that you can be a performer. I'm only training right now to be a performer. I definitely want to get use out of my body while it's still young and healthy. I definitely think that um, I will continue to teach on the side um, and I definitely will probably end up doing teaching like down the road as well and continue to do it as an extra as well. This to me is pretty much been my whole life. It's my everything. I've been doing it since I was like a child and I do it every day and I will never stop doing it. <laughs> well, she's okay, but I think we should have a dance off. What do you say to that, Andrew? Andrew? Oh, we're back. Sorry, folks. I was just reading a good article. You know, speaking of news, have you noticed how Hollywood portrays the journalism industry? Oh, yes. It's happening quite a few moves over the years, such as Blood Diamond and All the Presidents Men. But the big questions are, how accurate is the portrayal? What's the interest really like? And where's the interest headed? Well, we're about to find out as we follow a newspa newspaper reporter on our next sh short doc about, it's called A Reporter's Story. Here it is. As far as Hollywood's portrayal of the journalism industry, newspaper reporters specifically seem to be portrayed as hard-nosed, hard-edged, and just hard people, which isn't accurate, I don't think. I think newspaper writers, photographers, 
reporters, editors, I think are all at their core creative types. When I first started in the industry over a decade ago, it was really suffering. The Great Recession had hit in 2008, and then reporters, photographers, editors were being let go from papers left, right, and center all over North America. And how it's evolving from this point is that a reporter's job has become harder. There are fewer people in newsrooms, so you're given more to report about. So there's less time to really craft a story the way you want to. In an ideal situation, you will be assigned stories that you've already covered. So if I'm covering a court case one day and I file a story on what happened in court, if it's back in court the next day, I'll be back in that same courtroom to report on it because I'm familiar with it at that point. One thing I've found is that you end up doing certain stories that you gravitate towards the most. For me, it seems to be a lot of crime stories. I like writing about anything that has an edge. In terms of memorable stories I've done, what comes to mind is the Occupy Toronto movement. For me, that's memorable because I was there where it was just a real interesting slice of life because you saw a real mix of humanity there and it just really made it interesting. If you could think of your most vivid memory when you walked through the park that day, what do you think, or at least one time, your most vivid memory, what do you think it was? In terms of the future of the role of people like reporters, I think everyone in the industry is a bit nervous based on what's happened over the past 10, 12, 13 years or so. I don't know any reporter who doesn't use Twitter to tweet out little snippets of the story as it's unfolding. So you'll probably see less and less hard copy paper, like an actual paper newspaper, and you'll see more and more stuff online. There was a real interesting story about the way journalism has evolved and where it's going. It sure was. And now we have a special guest performer here to play his original song, Move On. Please welcome Mr. Matthew Pierre.
Cause I don't know what you want from me That was a great performance by Matthew Perrier. Don't you think, Andrew? Andrew? Oh, no. Uh, camera four? Oh. Camera four? Oh, camera four? there you are. Do you know where Andrew is? Uh, can you go look for him and bring him back? Good. Go fetch. Go. Hey, everyone. I was just grabbing some lunch from Chicago Eatery. It took longer than I expected because they don't pre-cook any of the food and it's all fresh. And speak of Chicago, our next story takes us there to see what the chef has to offer and what to think he thinks is going to make his new eatery a success. Oh, and if you have any food nearby, you might want to get it out now. By the time this dark over, you'll be starving. Here's new appetite and joy. Hi, I'm Mike Katrowski. We're here at Chicago Eatery with Chef Dylan. Dylan, what do you have for us today? Uh, today I got some of our top sellers. It's our half-smoked chicken, half-rack of smoked baby back ribs, and of course the bison burger, which sells tremendously. And everyone seems to love it. Fantastic. Let's eat. Chicago Eatery opened up as of January 26th. We're really excited to be doing this. I'm here because I'm really good at smoked foods as well as working by a grill. I'm really good at writing recipes. So I'm glad to be here, you know, be able to write my own menu, do something creative. And I'm looking forward to hopefully a very busy summer and a very busy next few years. I've read a lot of material in my life one of the best reads that I've ever, ever experienced was Chicago menu. Right now we're gonna do some half smoked chickens. We got some fresh chickens, whole chickens, about four to five pounds. So we start with a brining process. Now our brine is pretty much, it's got some smoked paprika, bay leaves, peppercorns, brown sugar, and uh, salt. When it's a whole animal, you don't wanna just coat the outside with salt. It won't be seasoned throughout the whole thing. Right. So by brining them, you're submerging them in the seasoning and it absorbs throughout a couple of days. So I would wrap this up, label it today for today, Fast forward two days. Now also I brine my breast for our chicken breast sandwich. So we have them the same brine, right? Because, you know, why not put chicken with chicken? Go right down the middle of it. Bend the wing back. That's a, an MMA move there. All our seasonings and rubs we make in-house. So yeah. this one for the half chickens, I just give a light seasoning. It's pretty much got some chili flakes in it, smoked paprika, salt, pepper, a bit of cumin. This is mainly just to give the skin a nice crisp seasoning, right? Because I mean, what's when you're eating a half chicken, what's the best part? The skin. The skin, of course. This is Paradise. If there was a place to go on vacation called Paradise, it's right here at Chicago's restaurant. These are pork baby back ribs, our yeah. rib rub. We rub them down very well. You know, I'm always very liberal on the seasoning. Our rib rub is, consists mostly of paprika and black pepper. Right. It has a little bit of Cajun, a little bit of cayenne, uh, a lot of dry spices. It really brings out a lot of flavor. Okay. Nice one. Well. Oh yeah. yeah. There's a good amount yeah. of chili flakes in there too. Very good, yeah. That smells great. Fantastic. See that, how the spices really get into the ribs. The barbecue sauce adds that nice char from the grill. And then the whiskey glaze have that sweet bourbon hint throughout the entire thing. Best ribs in the entire world. 
bison burger, the ultimate burger experience. Eight ounce bison burger served on a bun with, are you, I can't even say it, that's how awesome it is. Now this is one of our top seller by far. Everyone loves our bison burgers. Uh, this is our own recipe. Everything we do here is made from scratch. Here's some of our mix. We have white onions, oh, Spanish like onions. We got minced garlic, roasted garlic, uh, Dijon mustard, and our house-made barbecue sauce. Some spices, so this is mostly salt, dried thyme, and a little bit of black pepper and smoked paprika. You get an even coating when you're mixing with your hands. You know, you can try with a spoon, but you're not gonna get the meat well, like all the seasonings and everything well massaged. So now we form our burgers to eight ounces. Oh, almost there. And we're good. Oh, 8.1. Someone got lucky. We really want to ensure we get all the air out of the meat because we don't use filler like eggs and breadcrumbs. So we want to make sure that the meat is well tightly packed and staying together, right? It's well formed. Lay that down. I cook it to anywhere between medium and medium well. After I've got it almost halfway cooked, I'll throw the bun in the oven. Yeah, we use square ciabatta buns from Boulard's company, really good quality bread. And once I serve it, you guys will see how I plate it, what uh, toppings go on it. You get the choice of three toppings. So you want Havarti, provolone, bacon, mushrooms, caramelized onions, yes. smoked jalapenos. Yes. yes, I'll take all that. That is juicy. We haven't done any marketing where we really want the food to really word of mouth to say, I went to Chicago Eater, you know that's open already. I had a steak sandwich yesterday, the flavor was incredible. That's what I'm really looking for is the food to really carry itself and advertise itself. We offer high quality. We take care in the food and the quality that you're getting and you're getting the best bang for your buck here. It's got a good ambiance, a good environment. This is what Anybody who would like this environment, anybody who likes really good quality food, will like this place. Wow, that was awesome. What do you think, Andrew? Uh, best menu in the entire world. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's, we've reached the end of yet another season. We hope you enjoyed watching this year's Shows and Docs. I know I did. Same here. Tune in next year for now all new exciting season. To conclude our show, we have yet another song by Mr. Perrier called Consequence of Age. I'm your co-host, Marcelo Galvão. And I'm Andrew Safe. And we will see you next year on The, the Journal. Journal.
my share of riders block my knowledge up against the clock when all I really am is just a boy who wants to rock I can't ride like Hemingway I can't ride like Dr. Dre but none of that matters now I'm breaking away breaking away from the constant cycle of throwing out ideas that could have been insightful to better myself as a writer in hopes of making some kids day much brighter To live and write about your life without hesitation I know it may be tough You may be wondering if it's wrong or right I'm telling you now you gotta stop Playing the judge with this one night Oh, you songwriters of the next generation You've got to live and write about your life Without hesitation I know it may be tough you may be wondering if it's wrong